Okay, let's see how conditioning can work for PDFs. So let's say we have a pair of continuous random variables. And as usual, we're gonna call these random variables X and Y, and they're gonna be described by this joint PDF, which we've been writing as little f of X, Y. Right, and let's say we now observe that Y, the random variable is equal to this value, little y. And I wanna update my joint PDF to incorporate this information. Okay, so this is just conditioning on this particular event, random variable y is equal to little y. So we restrict the joint PDF to pairs where that's true, okay? And we also need to rescale our PDF. And in this case, we'll do it by dividing by the marginal PDF of y. And that leaves us with this object we call the conditional PDF, f of x given y, okay? And we denote that with this bar. And we just write that as the joint PDF divided by the marginal PDF of Y in the range and zero otherwise, okay? And it's important to note that once you plug in the value of Y on the right-hand side here, you are restricting everything to values, pairs where that's true, okay? And then to get the correct probability in that restricted region, you're rescaling by the density of probability at that particular y, okay? But because you could observe any value of y in the range, then this conditional PDF actually is also a function of y because it can adapt to whatever value you see, okay? So usually we've been writing a, um, a PDF given an event. So we always think of that as a specific event, but now the event actually can change with the specific value of y that we observe, okay? And that's why this restriction to the value of y is a bit implicit because every time you observe a different value of y, it's changing. And that's why it can actually run over the whole range. Okay, so we can also define the conditional PDF of y given x. So that's f of y bar x. And this is the same definition, except now we're just dividing by the marginal PDF of x. Okay, really simple. We just rescale by dividing by that marginal PDF. Let's work out a simple example. So in this case, we're going to have a joint PDF that is flat. So in this case, it has height two. When X is positive or non-negative, Y is non-negative, but X plus Y is less than or equal to one, and it's zero otherwise. So it helps to draw the range. In this case, we draw the range by writing this line X plus Y equals one, and noting that we have to stay below that line and above um, X equals zero and Y equals zero. That's the range. And we ask, what is the conditional PDF in this particular case? What we notice is the first thing that we're gonna need is the marginal PDF, and we aren't given that directly. So to get the marginal PDF, we take the joint PDF and we integrate out the variable we don't want, in this case, y. So I'm gonna integrate out with respect to y, and I need to figure out how to do that. So right here, I have plugged in the value of the joint PDF to I need to figure out my integration limits, and I'm gonna do that using my range sketch. So the way that it works, I'm thinking about x as a value that I'm being given. I'm trying to figure out where y can range. So y starts out at zero, and it goes up to this line, and it intersects the line at one minus x, okay? Because what I need is that y plus x is equal to one. So if I have one minus x, plus x, that's one. And so those are my integration limits. And so ultimately I get two times one minus x when x is between zero and one and zero otherwise. And the way I got this x between zero and one is because if you look at this range plot, x is allowed to go between zero and one. It is restricted between some values when you know the value of y, but in the marginal of x, you aren't given the value of y. So x is free to take any value between zero and one, some values are more likely than others. You can kind of see from the range which ones those are. So one is more likely than um, zero, or sorry, zero is more likely than one because you're always allowed to take the value x equals zero, but you're not always allowed to take the value x equals one. It depends on the value of y. Okay, so f of y given x, is then just two divided by two times one minus x, so just one over one minus x, and the range is the same. Okay, so we just keep the same range.
and zero otherwise. So that's going to be the marginal PDF of y given x. Okay, so the conditional PDF has the same properties as a PDF. So same basic PDF properties, just list them right now. So there's non-negativity, and so that means you can't be negative for either of these conditional PDFs. There's normalization, meaning that if I integrate out the variable that I'm um, using this to get the density of, I should get one. And notice that the integral does not involve the variable that I'm conditioning on. It only involves the variable that I'm interested in. I also have additivity, which means if I'm interested in the probability of falling into an event, given that one of the random variables is fixed, I just integrate the corresponding conditional PDF over that event. I also have the same uh, conditional probability techniques that we've seen before. So I have the multiplication rule. So that means if I want the joint PDF, I can multiply a conditional PDF times the appropriate marginal PDF. I have the law of total probability, which means if I want a marginal PDF and I just have a conditional and marginal, well, I can integrate that product with respect to the variable I don't want. And Bayes' rule lets me flip conditioning. So if I have one conditional PDF and both marginals, then I can work out the other one. Okay, so this is how I do it in one direction and in the other direction. And you can look these up when you need them. Okay, so just like before, the conditional PDF can be used to express hierarchical probability models. And what we saw that that meant last time when we dealt with conditional PMFs was that we can write the conditional model, so in this case, f of y given x, using a family of random variables, okay? But the twist is that the parameters of that family will be a function of a, this variable x, and we can also generate x randomly. Let's look at this through an example. Let's say what you want to do is you wanna measure some quantity, okay? And let's call it x, and let's just say you know that it lives between zero and four, and you're happy modeling it as uniform zero, four. But you're only able to measure a noisy version, okay? So you can't see x directly. You have this Gaussian noisy version, okay? So specifically, um, you can measure y, which given that x is equal to this value little x, it's Gaussian x, okay, with variance nine, meaning that the Gaussian is centered at x, so it is centered at the value that you want, but it fluctuates around that value. Okay, so if I were to write the joint PDF explicitly, I'd get this one over square root two pi times nine times the exponential of minus y minus x squared over two times nine, but I think it's more convenient to kind of just look at this um, description to say that it's Gaussian x comma nine. Okay, and let's use this information to calculate the probability that we see a y that is greater than one given that x is equal to one half. Okay, and we know that given that x is equal to one half, y is Gaussian uh, one half nine, all right? And so what that means is when I'm trying to get this probability of this uh, region, well, first I'm gonna take the complement because that's gonna make things more convenient for me. So I'm taking one minus the probability that y is less than or equal to one, given that x is equal to one half. And this I can calculate using the phi function, okay? So the probability of an interval or being less than or equal to some value for a Gaussian, I can get using the phi function. I plug in the value I want, in this case one, subtract the mean, in this case that's x, and x is equal to one half, and I divide by the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, which in this case is nine, so overall I get one minus one half over three. And that simplifies to one minus phi of negative one sixth, and if I go to my lookup table, I'll see that's minus, uh, or sorry, one minus 0.4338, and that ends up being 0.5662 overall. Okay, and let's look at the same setup again. I'm gonna write down the marginal PDF of X from the uniform distribution just to have it. Um, and what I wanna do is I wanna work out the marginal PDF of Y, which I'm not given, okay? And so I know the way that I'm supposed to do that is by integrating the joint PDF with respect to the variable I don't want, in this case, X, but I don't have the joint PDF. So I need to write the joint PDF using the multiplication rule, 
the conditional times the marginal that I do have. Okay, so I plug both of those in. I have one over root two pi times nine times the exponent e to the minus uh, y minus x squared over two times nine times one fourth dx. And I integrate this over the range of x, which in this case is pretty simple. It's just from zero to four. And I'm basically done at this point. So if you wanted to submit this answer for this class, um, that's an integral with the correct limits and you would be done. I'm just gonna spend a little bit more time for anyone who's interested, and you don't have to watch this, to just show how could I uh, continue on with this integral to actually get some values, okay? And so the trick here is to realize this is almost um, in the form of a, the standard normal CDF, okay? So this phi function is basically integrating from negative infinity to z, this particular function, which is the PDF of Gaussian 0, 1. And so here, if I do a change of variables and I take w to be y minus x over three, then what I'll get from this is the following integral. So the limits have changed a bit, and I'll say more about that in a second, but you'll notice the thing I'm integrating is exactly the same thing I integrate in the phi function, okay? So the limits of the integral I got from just plugging in the values of x that I had into this transformation into w and taking into account the fact that because I have a negative sign that I need um, in this transformation from dx to dw that I switch them around. So I had y minus 0 over 3 now at the top and y minus 4 over 3 now at the bottom. And recognizing that this is a phi function, I can write this as a fourth phi of y over 3 minus phi of y minus 4 over 3. Okay, and that's how you would get an explicit value for this PDF. And what's a bit strange about this is that usually we're using these differences of phi functions to get probabilities, not uh, values of the PDF. But in this case, that's just what you're left with. So if you need to get a particular value, you have to look it up or use numerical integration. And then if you wanted to uh, calculate a probability, then you would have to integrate this marginal PDF again. And that's just what you're left with.